Alright, uh, in this video I want to show you uh, all these physical options, uh, how they work and how the, you can use them. So here's my simple scene setup, bunch of fragments and sphere, I will add them in dynamic list and this box I will add into uh, static list. Uh, always use boxes, do not use planes, it's just not real and you can get weird results. Always use boxes as ground. Okay, uh, first drop down allows you to choose physical engine and uh, so far you can use only physics later there will be bullet available but so far only physics and of course only if you have a physics plugin installed uh, okay next uh, three spinners I'll, uh, allows you to set simulation uh, start frame and frame and uh, time range so uh, start frame just uh, as we expected uh, set when simulation will start so frame 10 here End frame shows you when it will stop, will be stopped, and the time range shows you how many frames it will be simulated. As you can see, changing start frame and the end frame spinners, uh, if I automatically updates this time range, uh, you have these three spinners because sometimes you just need to simulate some predefined amount of range uh, of time, like 60 frames, and uh, as you can see, changing time range you also updates end frame and sometimes you just have start frame and end frame and it's easier to just set it like say let's say I want to 100 frames ends and uh, start time zero okay and uh, when you uh, define all this frame stuff you can start simulation okay you can see everything falling down Uh, as you can see, I have here the sphere. It's pre-animated, and sometimes you may need to continue its movement. And as you can see, at zero frame it just stay. It don't, it don't it don't move at zero frame, so it just falling fall fall down as other fragments. Uh, and if you want to continue its animation, you just need to start the simulation. Let's say at frame five, the frame uh, when this object moves. If I will start it at five. As you can see, it will hit all the fragments. Okay, uh, next uh, property is collision tolerance. Uh, this is just uh, describes the distance that uh, rigid bodies are allowed to overlap. And to easier see how it works, it's uh, easier to start simulation. Okay, I paused it. And as you can see, uh, it just uh, all the fragments just a little bit interpenetrates this box because I have one centimeter here collision tolerance and if I will continue simulation I can increase it and you can see how fragments start interpenetrate this ground I will set it to let's say 7 start again and as you can see now now they interpenetrate much much more uh, keep in mind that all this uh, property like collision tolerance, substep, gravity and time scale, they are interactive. You can change them during simulation, like you can hit pause. And uh, actually I will increase end frame, so you will have more time to see the difference. Set it to, let's say, 0 centimeters collision tolerance. Now start simulation. Okay, here are some fragments, I can increase collision tolerance. And you can see how... how Fragments start start going into the ground. Down and down. And I can set to zero. And again. Uh, I uh, suggest you to use the low values. No, do not use zero because in this case object might explode in times because they will be uh, just a little bit uh, interpenetrated with each other. So just use uh, well, it's like one centimeter for long shots, and if you have some close-ups, you can increase it to let's say one, 0 0.1 centimeters. Okay, uh, next uh, property is step steps. It just defines simulation step steps for a physical engine, and uh, it, it uh, defines uh, how many steps uh, physical engine will be made between two frames. Uh, in most cases, you can use three or maybe five. Uh, but uh, sometimes you have uh, fast moving objects and in this case you need you only to increase this maybe up to 7 but not more because uh, 
this high values we can you may get a popcorn method I will show you so now I will start it zero so everything will just fall down without those explosions so as you can see uh, I have here 15 let's say 6 steps and if I have I said that you can see some objects start uh, jumping like this one. You just, you just just can't stop this weird simulation like this one. So in, in this case, you just better to use lower six steps value. Save this view, and this should help you to prevent this popcorn effect. As you can see now, everything is uh, resting. Okay. Uh, Next uh, property is gravity. As you expect, this describes uh, one uh, property of one. This is a real world uh, gravity, but I suggest you to to use lower properties for your simulation because it might be less real, but it will be more uh, spectacular. And also, it will help to have your simulation more stable. Uh, and again, you can start simulation, change gravity, get different results. You can set negative value. As you can see, objects start flying uh, up. Increase it again. Okay. Uh, next property is uh, time scale. It defines how. Uh, Quickly, you your simulation will be uh, simulated. Well, <laughs> okay. Uh, the one is again this is real world uh, usual uh, simulation uh, speed, uh, but sometimes you may need to make your simulation slower, and you can just make it less. So I will start with one, and I will start with frame three here just to show you how it works. And uh, I will start simulation. I will pause it. Now I can, let's say, say time scale to four, zero point four. Unpause simulation and uh, pause again and set it to one again. Back and unpause it again. So I can pause it again, and as you can see, all fragments have. Bake it animation, and I can take a look what I what I got. As you can see, it starts simulation with uh, uh, real world speed, then it becomes slower, and then back to normal speed. Here, right after collision, it becomes slower. And then back to usual speed. And of course, you can make your simulation even faster. Okay. Uh, next, uh, this three check buttons, uh, check boxes. Uh, as you can see, move time slider during simulation. Uh, this is very simple. Uh, when one frame will be simulated, it will just move time slider. So all fragments will be will bake its uh, change it anim change it position, and if let's say uh, sometimes you may need just to spread some stuff around, you don't need uh, to have animation of simulation or anything. You just need to take some bunch of objects and uh, spread it, spread them over the surface, uh, so you can uncheck this checkbox. I will hold, see, just in case. Uh, start preview. As you can see, everything is falling, but the uh, uh, time slider is not moving. You can wait until everything will took a rest, and uh, then just hit stop. And there it is. You don't uh, have any uh, animation anymore, but you just have some some fragments spreading around. I will touch back. See. Uh, a 
okay uh, now I want to show you how work this four simulation buttons first one you already seen uh, this is preview and uh, I will set and frame to let's say 50 so as you can see I have this uh, animation for this sphere short animation and uh, when you use preview mode you can just uh, take a look what you will get at the end and when all this uh, uh, 47th frames will be simulated you just will get everything back as you can see I again have all the simulation so you can try different properties take a look how it works for you if not works you can just change again and try different properties and when you found uh, which property works uh, well for you you can use this bake animation button and in this case after all these frames were simulated you just get all your animation as you can see everything is baked into keys so you can export uh, import everything into different packages the problem is that now you can restore previous animation so uh, use bake uh, animation only if you show with your properties or at least make some backups so uh, I will fetch scene back the third button is preview uh, uh, pause uh, very simple well, you already saw how it works you can start preview and pause it take a look something maybe you don't like some interpretations change some properties and if you like it you can unpause it again okay. and the last button is stop animation uh, let's say you start simulating uh, it works differently for preview and for bake animation so uh, we start bake animation let's say uh, okay I have here and frame it 500 and but all, everything already was simulated I don't need any more I can hit stop and here my simulation so I just don't have more keys than I need and uh, if I start preview okay so let's just on starting preview and again if I lucky uh, if I like what I have I hit stop and uh, in this case I don't have all this animation baked again I just have everything spread around and not any animation okay thank you for watching